Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Sunday, warrior mode, faith, strength, courage. With the three amigos, we are back together. <laughs> oh, man, Travis, have you been sorely missed? I mean, well, me, me and Bill were good, but you need that extra, that extra kind of a sprinkle of Travis on top. And so good to see you back, brother. It is definitely good to be back. I missed you guys last week. Now, this has become, as I told you, my, my favorite way to end one week and jump right into another. Yeah, I can't decide, Bill, if this is uh, wrapping up the week that's just been or getting ready for the week that's just ahead because 2020, it's not letting up any, right? No, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, this, as we spoke a few minutes ago off air, this is certainly the most bizarre year that I've ever had in my life. And I'm sure a lot of people could uh, and would agree with that. And uh, I agree with you, Kev, that um, it's probably a combination of both, wrapping up the one and, and getting people prepared for the coming weeks. So we're in the perfect position to be able to do both of those things. Absolutely. And of course, you'll be going over the prayer list later on in the show. And Travis, yes. this week, I'm going to hand over to you because, man, whoa, who have you got for us this week? I'm actually quite nervous, and I don't get nervous, <laughs> Travis. I really don't. But um, I'm looking forward to this. So tell the audience who it is that you've got joining us today. Well, well, two things. First of all, Kev, your inner fanboy is coming out once again. I know, again. I know. It I'm does have to that every now and then. It just it like kind of does. comes out. I know. It's, it's like you can't control him. Bill, for you to say that 2020 is the strangest year ever, I mean, this is the man who wrote Dark Force, Delivered, <laughs> Stranger Things, and working on Stranger Things, too. So for that statement to be made from you, that is saying quite a bit about 2020. Yes, because I've had many bizarre years in my life, yes, but uh, the things that have taken place here and continue to take place, just uh, you just go, what's next? <laughs> well, what's next tonight? This is what I love about this show is the way that we just kind of are very, very organic. And yeah. as, as individuals and guests come our way, we're able to fit them in. And we're very, very fortunate tonight to have a gentleman. I had the pleasure of interviewing him about three or four weeks ago for my radio stations here in London, Kentucky, for an entertainment segment. And we are very thrilled to have him on Warrior Mode this week. We have with us Eddie Perez. He's a Los Angeles-based director and stunt coordinator. And as a director, he is a multiple award winner for his short film, A Test of Time, which Kev can talk about because he also watched it a little bit earlier today. And as a stunt coordinator, he is a three-time nominee, two-time Emmy winner for Shameless, a show that I watched for many years. I, I have to confess, I haven't watched it recently uh, in, the, in the most recent seasons, but was a huge fan of it when I was watching it. Uh, he was nominated recently uh, for another Emmy for that show. He may now be a three-time winner. We'll find out tonight during Warrior Mode. Uh, he's also won the SAG Award for Outstanding Performance by a Stunt Ensemble on Star Trek. He's worked on over 300 projects as a director, stunt coordinator, and or performer. Recent notable projects include Snowfall, Perceptual Lady, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Deadpool, one of my favorites, and Sicario. Eddie's goal is to put the scripted vision on film using the most creative techniques available to fit that particular story. So, Warrior Mode, welcome, Mr. Eddie Perez. Thank Eddie, you, thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. It's good to talk to you again, man. I enjoyed our interview a few weeks ago. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. You know, I wish things would have changed more in the last few weeks, but they seem to still be silly in the, the quote unquote new normal. Well, and I was, you know, I, what I want to do is let's start most recently and work our way back. Now, when I talked to you, uh, I, it's been a, about a month ago, I guess, uh, maybe yeah. three weeks, uh, you had been nominated for uh, an Emmy for Shameless. Those awards have taken place. So, what news do you have for us on that front? Uh, I was fortunate enough to win my third one. So congratulations, really, sir! Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. I'm honored to win for the show. And uh, again, it was an interesting award show because we did them virtually at home. Um, everyone had to pre-tape their speech, which was kind of weird because if you lost, you never saw your speech. So you right. had to kind of be happy and thrilled, and then cross your fingers and hope you win. So and. Uh, they did four nights, an hour a night, 
then Saturday night was the final night and some of it was live. And because of the show that most people see on a Sunday, they do a lot of the guest star actors and a lot of the actors, I just refuse to do a pre-tape of, you know, them saying they won. Uh, and I think it might fear that it might've wound up in the ether somewhere, but it, it was just kind of really bizarre to sit there and thank everyone and go, yeah, I won. And then wait and see if you did or did. You know, Eddie, um, the first time you probably didn't get to take much of it in because you were, you know, you'd be elated, you know? Yeah. So the second time, yeah. probably you managed to enjoy the experience, if I can put it that way, a bit more. But now the third yeah. time, just when you're getting, you know, a bit of a dab hand at this, they go and change <laughs> yeah. it all again, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, I got to watch it at home on my laptop uh, in shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> and go, hey, I want it over. Okay, let's go get a burger. So, you know, so it, it, it was kind of real, you know, where normally you go through the whole press process and everything. It was just like, oh, okay, I'm done. So, so you know, it, it was different and interesting in a way. Well, I can't wait to pick your brain about Shameless because I uh, like we were joking before yeah. the show. Um, in Glasgow, the character Frank from the show, um, what a character, a colorful character to say the least. Yeah. But very, very common in Glasgow. So I'm looking forward to getting into that with you. But I usually ask everyone, doesn't matter where they come from, what yeah. they work in. How did Eddie Perez end up doing what you do? Uh, oof, I, I feel like it's a, a, a comedy of errors in a good way. I used to work as a personal trainer, so I trained Mickey Rourke and Anthony Michael Hall. And, uh, uh, I also worked as a minder uh, for uh, Pink Floyd and Duran Duran did some stuff with Guns N' Roses and David Bowie. And through that, I met film people, and I, it kind of is something I wanted to do, but I didn't know how. And through all the conversations, everybody's like, well, you know, you do this, you do that, you do that. And it, it just kind of evolved. My friend Isai Morales was doing a movie years ago called La Bamba, and uh, I rode Indian motorcycles, and I built them. So he had to ride one in the movie, so I helped him out with it, and then they let me stay on the movie. And the director, Taylor Hackford, who's a, a great human being, kind of worked with me and brought me on. And then he did another movie, brought me back two years later. And I decided to stay here and, you know, try to stick it out. I found something that I, you know, enjoyed in the people. And this whole process was, you know, interesting to me. Yeah, it's great when you can um, actually pursue something that you enjoy doing. And yeah, um, yeah. Travis mentioned I'd watched your short film today. A test of time and i was going to ask you what inspired that because um it felt very personal <laughs> it, it was um i had got injured on a movie and i was uh, in the hospital for a bit burned in a fire and uh i saw a particular couple they were great it was very la and they were you know like the typical good looking guy good looking girl and he had gotten burned severely in his face and the conversations there the whole time from his wife were like i don't know if i can deal with this i don't know if i can live with this and uh it just resonated to me about you know the superficialness of everything and i felt like uh i was, I was sitting with a friend there uh, there was a writer and he's like we should write this down and then also i was like we should make a short about it i was like you know what yeah i want to get this off my chest so yes i feel i need to i need to put it out there you know, in a way that also uh, the atypical of Hollywood where, you know, make the, the woman the good person as opposed to the guy always being the good guy. That, you know, that we're, we all have our faults, kind of, you know. No, um, so, for anyone who hasn't seen this, Eddie's got his own YouTube channel, Eddie Perez. It's called A, a Test of Time. And, I mean, the way it's shot as well... Um, it's, it's visually stunning. It's a great story. And I believe you, you won some awards for that, right? Yeah, I won quite a few, you know, which, which was nice, not, not expected. But again, it just came from the heart. And I was kind of happy that, it, like, oh, well, it's resonating to people. And, you know, so many people came up to me and said, wow, it really felt like, you know, you understood that and told that story and made me feel like, you know, to go home and look at my family, some people are like, and think about, you know, what if something was to happen? You know, everything's always great when everything's going perfect. When something goes bad, how, how do you really react? And that's, that's the thing you don't, never really know about people. 
you know, even though everybody's like, oh, this is all perfect, this is great. When something goes bad, and you know, and it's, it's relevant to the time we're going through now. You know, now when things are bad, I, I think you're going to find out who the real people around you are. You know, very true. What it's made of. Yeah, guys, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. hogging the time here, so Bill, Travis, you jump in whenever you're ready. I told you, your fanboy. It's your fanboy coming out. There, you know? It's just well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little, a little something from uh, uh, Frank on Shameless. You'll see that he gives the old Glasgow kiss a lot. Oh yes, he does. Yeah, that, and that came from uh, my friends in Glasgow. So <laughs> and for those that don't know, it's a headbutt. Now, now I'll so be able that, to. That, I'll be smiling even Glasgow. more when I watch it now. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, but that comes from that. That thing comes from Glasgow. <laughs> Some yeah. things are only from Glasgow, Travis. Well, <laughs> you see. And you're one of them, Kev. You're one. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, Eddie. You know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I, I did watch Shameless for for many seasons early on, and then life all you know gets in the yeah. way. Yeah. And uh, getting ready to start binge watching it, but you know. It's odd, or not odd, but it's interesting that you were nominated for an Emmy for its stunt work in a, on a comedy. Now, you, you think about Star Trek and Next Generation yeah. and all these all these shows, and you, we see how stunt coordination comes into play. Is it is it a different process in a in a comedic setting, or is it is it still everything the same way? Yeah, I, I mean, it, they're they're all different. Shameless is uh, really unusual in that the comedy is in the uncomfortableness. So everything we do that's violent sometimes has to be a little bit more violent than normal to make people uncomfortable. Because when you make people uncomfortable, they'll laugh about it because it's so absurd, you know. And, and again, like I go back to Frank's Glasgow kiss. It's like he headbutts people. It's such, you know coming from him is such an absurd thing. But you know, as Kevin can attest to you in Scotland, there's a lot of guys like him, and that's the first thing they do. They come at you with their head, so that we we kind of made that part of his character. So it's just kind of finding little things that people do that are unusual and weird, but make you laugh. I mean, it's it's not you know I always told you it's not that ha ha humor, and and you know it's based on a, a series that was in England, Shameless, and and that was completely a different type of humor, and I just and it's a great show as well. So it's just finding that, you know, for a show like that, it's finding more of the humor in the humanity of people rather than, you know, the, the regular comedies you see on network where it's ha-ha funny. You're waiting for the laugh. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely, there's a definitely timing and pace to it. Shameless has got... Pace the laugh. Yeah, Shameless has got something unique as well, and uh, it travelled well in between the UK and the US version. Yeah, yeah. And that is... Uh, Nine times out of ten, you watch any show over here, you can't really relate to it because everyone's got such a yep. perfect life. They've got money in the bank. Everything's going great. But then something like Shameless comes along. And I think more people can relate to, to just how real the characters in that show are, you know? Yeah, well, everybody's, uh, a lot of people tell me it's a feel-good show because you watch that and you feel good about your family because your family's <laughs> not that screwed up. Number one, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's always about it, the show is about family. At the end of the day, they're always they're always like we're Gallagher's. No matter what happens, they stick together, even though they screw each other and do whatever they do to each other. At the end of the day, like hey, but we're family. So I, I think that resonates to people that like oh wow, my family does screwed up things, but yeah, they're still my family. So. Well, I was going to say that that is one of the things I think that makes it so accessible and so so popular is that yeah. you know we, we can look at it and go, well, you know, I come from a screwed up family too, or you know, yeah. I've I've done I've made huge mistakes like this, but everybody still in that core group still accepts and still loves me. Yeah, yeah, and they and, and you know, I mean, Frank has done I think everything humanly possible to those kids, and they still take him back in and accept them. Yes, you know, and and, and you know, to watch the evolution of the show. You know, the writing's been great and that some of them are becoming him and some of them are going their own way, mm -hmm. finding their own path. So you're getting to see, you know, what real families are like. It's, it's not, as you guys said, it's not, you know, the billionaires where everybody's perfect and everybody's got money and helicopters and, oh, we're having, you know, we're having drama because, you know, he wrecked his Ferrari and is an alcoholic. And it's like, no, this is real life. People worrying about being evicted. People worrying about where they're going to get their next meal. 
where are they going to, you know, but there's still some humor in that, you know, that we're, we're all human and we can find somewhere to laugh, you know, as, as tragic and ironic as whatever it is that could be happening is you can always find that second to find something to laugh about. And Eddie, let me ask you, uh, let's shift gears a little bit here. I want to yeah. know about, cause you're really an East coast guy. You grew up in yes, New York. Yeah. So, uh, I did, yes. tell me a little bit about that. What was it like growing up in New York? Were you in the city or? Uh, I was in Queens, which is right outside yeah. the city, right by Shea Stadium. Yeah. Where the Mets play. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I would trade that for the world. I, I enjoy, I love New York. I still do. You know, I, I have to admit that I'm a Californian now because I've been here so long, mm -hmm. but, uh, New York just had some, you know, again, something that, uh, just, you know, 24 hours a day, you could always sit on a street corner. I used to sit on a street corner in Manhattan. My friends and I just watch people. Yeah. You know, make people watching. And you learn a lot from just watching and, and you learn, you know, how to survive. Very you know? true. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah. like you, I've been in Manhattan at 4 a.m. in the morning and it looks like it's just uh, things are just getting started. People everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a it's a different way of life, um, you know, from being here and seeing how my friends grew up here. Sometimes I'm envious of them because they went to the beach every day and surfed and you know, had this great weather, but, uh, you know, New York, you have to endure the cold, the snow, and it, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it teaches you some sort of value uh, yeah. and you know, a resilience that, you know, it's, it's 20 degrees out and it's snowing at, you know, nine years old and you got to walk to school still. Exactly you know, right. I, yeah, I, I, miss that. I don't miss that, but you got to do it. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm having the vision of you then because, you know, again, I'm an East Coast guy, too, yeah. and I've spent a lot of time. I'm, I'm in Maryland, but I've spent a lot of time in New York, uh, you know, the work I do and the people that I see. Um, so everything you're saying is just ringing true to me, and I'm seeing it in my mind as you're describing it. How did you uh, come about uh, your physical fitness? Did it start there in your younger years in New York? Yeah, yeah, I, I boxed, and uh, I had a lot of friends I used to train with. I knew so. you were a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, did my best. Uh, fought a little bit. Just wasn't my thing. I decided to stay in school. I guess it was a better choice for me. Uh, you know, just I, again going to fight some of these kids that, that were a lot hungrier than I was. Yeah. You know, they're looking. They're looking through me. I, you know, that's their survival mode. Yeah. And uh, you know, I had that, but not what they had. You know, but I still loved it. Enjoyed me. It, it shaped my life to where it is now, again, just teaching me, you know, how to, how to be uh, focused and train and, you know, it, it set the path for life kind of. Absolutely. That's, that's a great story. And hopefully you'll write a book someday about it. I'll buy that book. I think it'd be very interesting. <laughs> I know people have told me that. I was like, I don't, you know, I it, it's always bizarre because I, you know, I, I always like love talking to people and willing to give people any, you know, the time, especially in my industry when people don't like the new people that are coming in and try to, you know, just put them in the right direction. Yeah. So, you know, I just, uh, sometimes I'm like, people are like, you should write a book just to help show people, you know, which way, what direction they go in and how they, they can focus. And I go, yeah, I guess I never thought of it that way. Yeah. You know, more of, about me, just about, uh, you know, showing people which way to go. Every man's life touches another. We always hope that it's in a positive way. Yeah. And just by our limited conversation here, I certainly believe that you have a lot to offer. And if you did write such a book, I think it would be. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've got Bill back with us now. We're at our full compliment. Yeah. We're all back. We're, we're, we're somehow back here, Bill. I, I, well, I that's what I get for asking Eddie about New York and going back to the exactly. early days. And <laughs> that's what I, yeah, I was saying, I think 2020, anything can happen. <laughs> and we're sorry to... for that, Eddie. You know, I... it happens. Like I said, with this technology now, it's like game on. Yep.
you know, this I is think, the first I, issue I that we've had with Zoom like this, and hopefully yeah. the last. My love affair with Zoom just ended. Same here. They tried to extort me out of money to try and get us on a longer call, so I thought, well, I can get around that and just set up another hour-long one. So more, we're, we're good to go, guys. We're good to go. Yeah, and I, I, I think, uh, you know, at least you haven't had anybody pop up that you didn't know on on here yet. That's I've true. Heard that yeah, I've heard was, of that happening. Yeah, I was watching a court case, and... Um, <laughs> The, the weirdest things happen and the fact that you can go to court now via zoom and watch people yeah. in court and zoom and and i mean I hate to be rude but somebody turned up naked it was something like you'd see in shameless <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's crazy it's, it's gonna you know it's crazy it's, it's, i know a lot of the, a lot of the studios are using uh yahoo but that one is horrible that's even i mean zoom is great the yahoo one is it's just the quality is really bad, but I guess it's more secure. So it's you're giving up one for another thing. Wow. Now, Eddie, let me ask you then, because um, Travis, when he was doing your bio, mentioned two movies that really I, I love. You've got Sicario, but Star Trek. You, you worked on one of the Star Treks as well. Yes, I, I did, have yeah. to ask you. I mean, what was that like? Was uh, that... Yeah, it was, it was awesome because I, I'm, you know. Uh, Star Trek fan and you know total geek. So when when I hear about movies like that come up and people call me, I just like uh, like absolutely. So I did the opening of the film where uh, we save uh, Captain Captain Kirk basically from the ship, and uh, you know wheel around Captain Kirk's mom because she's pregnant to get her off the ship before it blows up. So it was kind of a really cool. You know, just kind of have this weird moment, like, holy shit, not only am I doing Star Trek, I'm saving <laughs> Captain Kirk, <laughs> you know, be, as he's being born. Okay, this is awesome. Yeah. So, so, you know, one of those moments is like, ah, never in a million years, but it, it's cool, you know. What would you I say your favorite uh, uh, role or movie? What what would be number one for you? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to say because they're all different, but, uh, you know, the one that really is kind of, uh, really close to me, I guess, would be um, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen because it was the first big movie I did, it was with Sean Connery. Yeah. And, you know, I spent eight months of my life doing that movie, and it was a period piece. So it just had so many cool elements. And just being in Prague for eight months was just, you know, amazing. So, to you know, it, it just had so many levels of things that, you know, check my boxes off my list that were like okay this is this just checks everything yeah that and I have to such say, a fantastic feeling yeah and i have yeah, to say yeah. it's one of my favorites I know a lot of people don't like it but i really yeah. like the every extraordinary gentleman i think it was yeah ahead of its time and bringing those those characters together and doing the whole shared universe that we're seeing across yeah, the board and, now and, you know unfortunately you know it went up against pirates that year yes. the caribbean so it's it's a hard Sometimes it's timing. You know, if it would have come out six months later, it might have been a different story. You know, it's a hit or miss sometimes. And, you know, to open up the same weekend as Pirates was it's not, not a good one. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, Sean Connery, get, you know, as amazing as he is, didn't carry the weight that Pirates of the Caribbean did. Well, you know, really cool that was his last movie so you you yeah, got to, yeah. you got to work with him on the last film that he ever did yeah sadly, sadly it was yeah he had had enough of hollywood he felt like he didn't understand it anymore you know he uh i talked to him a few times and he just felt that you know it'd become more about camera tricks and uh visual effects than about the art that he and he's like i just don't get these movies because I get off with all these movies and I just really don't get them, then they do well. So I guess I have to do them. And then he's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe you know, it's time for me to go back to the house in the Bahamas and just retire and enjoy life. Because uh, I don't get these movies anymore. And I, I, I don't want to act to green, to green, you know, tennis ball all the time. It's just not fun. He's James Bond. You know, he he can do what he wants, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He came from and it came from a different era, you know, yeah. when you had to act. And now, you know, I understand this frustration of having, you know, again, to act to a, a tennis ball or a stick, and eventually be a character that doesn't give you anything back. It's a different, different skill set. 
you know, there's a lot of them, you know, he, he want, needs and likes that interaction. Well, and speaking of, of, of things changing in the industry, and just to broach the subject a little bit, because we always talk about 2020 yes. and COVID-19 and the pandemic, it's changed the entertainment industry like it has changed every other aspect of life. You were talking earlier, and this is something that, we're, you know, of course, Bill does a lot of TV appearances and, and things like that, and you guys can share your stories, but you were saying up until recently, you were doing six COVID tests a week because yeah, of working yeah. on two separate shows. Yeah, two different, well, two different networks. They, were, they, they weren't sharing the tests. So I have to take the test from one network and then the other. I hear uh, now this week it's changing, so I won't have to like run from one place to another. But, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, they're all covering themselves legally. So I, you know, I, again, so it's a legal stance more than, you know, and as all the rules come out now, I mean, you're trying to change a hundred years of filmmaking in two or three months. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's going to, there's going to be a massive learning curve. And, you know, we're, we're going through that learning curve and trying to fix it as quickly as possible to get back to work. But uh, people aren't realizing sometimes what the rules mean. Right. You know, yeah. in theory, they all sound fantastic until you have to implement them. And then the cost of what all these things are costing, all these tests are costing. I mean, there's hundreds and, of people you have to, you have to test every day, right. which I, you know, I, I, I respect that they're yes. doing that for everybody's safety. I mean, it, it's a, but it's a massive undertaking to take on and, and, you know, you know, they decided to, okay, we're going back to work in early September. And it's like, okay, now they have three weeks to put all the systems in place. It's just overwhelming. And I, I think, you know, people have done an amazing job, but it, it's, it's quite the undertaking and, you know, trying to train people about, you know, contract tracing and COVID and all, it's a huge, huge undertaking. Well, it's, it's also changed, you know, you, you just went through the Emmy Awards and this was totally yeah. different than it ever has been before. And it's also sucked a lot of the fun out of this. Yeah, yeah, it sucked a lot of the fun out of it, but it, it, kind of, it, was, it was kind of amusing in a way because you also didn't have all those big numbers that people just don't want to sit there and watch for hours. There's more to the point, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, give out the awards, get to the point, got to see people at home. You know, I, I wish people would have, the other thing I wish people would have dressed up a little and taken a little bit more, <laughs> you know? Everybody's like in t-shirts and jeans sitting on home at their couch and some people were nicely dressed. And I, I think it was still like, you know, I, I dressed for the night on, that was mine just out of respect for the actual awards and for what it stands for rather than you know kind of sit in a t-shirt and jeans and be like yeah yeah whatever (laughs) that's just amazing again indicative of the times that we are in and it just uh you just wonder where this leads and where it's going to go only god knows this but uh yeah just amazing uh how quickly things have changed and certainly in your world uh, changed in such a drastic way that you're like, it, it's amazing yeah. that the industry is even able to function at all. Yeah, I think of it, you know, I, I think of, uh, yeah, at least we can get back to somewhat of, of function. I mean, the rock and roll industry is just decimated. Yeah. yeah. I mean, touring is done. Yeah. For now. I mean, you know, that's, that's just, it's, it, that's going to be interesting to, you know, when that comes back. You know, everybody's canceling their shows till next year, same day next year, but you have Rock and Roll Cruiser out of work now for a year. We had uh, Liberty DeVito on the show a few weeks ago, and uh, his band, uh, he has two bands, they're actually playing uh, like on the back of flatbeds and people were pulling up in their cars and all that, so it's sort of like a drive-in type of deal. Yeah, yeah, and that's what uh, I, I talked to, you know, my friend Matt Sorum, who's a drummer from Guns N' Roses, and he said they're thinking of just trying to get parking lots and do that, do drive-in concerts, just to yeah. be able to do something. And we ask him, you know, how, how does it, how did it feel to you, you know, when they first started doing that? And he just said it was just so bizarre, and they were kind of like playing to themselves because you can't really connect with the audience in that way. Yeah. So now you just got to make sure that you are at the top of your game, uh, each individual as they come together yeah. as a band. 
Yeah, and they're talking about doing, you know, I know uh, the Catalina Film Festival this week is doing that. They're doing a drive through red carpet and a uh, drive-in for the festival, and they're talking about doing that for some of the premieres now, trying to do drive-in premieres. Wow. Uh, wow. You know, I got to get things going. The, it's you, incredible. You, you can't call this the new normal, because there's nothing normal <laughs> about any of this. No, you no, know. No, no. I know, I know. And, and you know, again, it's... It, it, hopefully it's temporary it's, it's how long how long is the temporary i guess is the question exactly and let's hope that the the potential cure isn't worse than the thing we're trying to fight in the first place well, exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. it's like let's hope they're not rushing it and you know people are going to find out that you know there's they have a certain allergy or something to whatever they do so that's the fear of not being able to test it properly so what big projects have you got on the horizon? Let's say everything goes back to normal in <laughs> six months, Eddie. Uh, any um, Oscar uh, nominations on the horizon? Any big projects coming uh, along? No. Right now, I'm just finishing up. We're on episode two of Shameless for the final season. And uh, we're on episode, before we got shut down, we we're on episode four of Snowfall. So we're starting back up next week. So I'm attempting to do both shows at once. So I'm running back and forth a lot. So for now, that's going to keep, you know, me pretty busy just because we're doing multiple pieces of episodes because some actors aren't available. And now, you know, we run into, and you can't blame people. Everybody's trying to work and make money. So, and catch up. So some actors will only be available for a week or two. So we'll shoot all everything we have for them in two weeks for the season. So there's going to be a lot of mixing and matching and, you know, I've got piles and piles of papers here <laughs> that I'm going through schedules and trying to make sure I don't miss anything because it, it, it's, it's, it's funny how the, that brain muscle memory in six months has gone away a little. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I've, literally, I, I've literally like started doing things and going, Holy shit, I forgot this. I forgot that things I never forget. I'm having to make a checklist for the first few days. Like, make sure you did this, make sure you did that. Make sure you emailed the following people about the information. And, and it's like, wow, I, I really kind of lost a little, this momentum that I didn't know I had, that I didn't have to second guess myself or think. Now I'm having to just kind of start over again and make sure I, I remember everything. And, and, you know, everybody's laughing because everybody's like, yeah, we're in the same boat. Yeah. We're having conversations, you know, Zoom conversations, double checking each other's work. Because I'm like, please double check my work. <laughs> That's like I'm in school. I was like, make sure I get 100%, not 80. <laughs> 80 not going to work. Uh, and, and we're like, oh, yeah, I forgot that. Hey, what about this? Oh, my God. Yeah, let, let's, let's talk about this. So, I mean, it's been great in that sense that, you know, we're all, we're all acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're all, we're all restarting our brains. It's kind of like, you know, rebooting your computer. It's like you, you're rebooting it. Now you got to upload all the information again. Because yeah. everybody had five months to download and just decompress. Well, again, it's the things that we take for granted that, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you think are automatic. And yeah. then when something like this comes along, man, it'll put you back to square one. And uh, reboot is a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's. And again, it's, it's uh, on the sets. The one thing I don't, I don't know if you found Bill from being on the sets. Uh, everybody seems more productive because there's a lot less people there. Yeah. Because of all the zones, you don't have a lot of people milling about. Yeah. Everybody's there, and the people that are there are there to work. So yeah, there that, seemed to be a more uh, more of an urgency and energy. Yeah, yeah I've noticed yeah. that. That wasn't before. I mean, that's, yep. that's one thing I've noticed. It's, it's, it's really interesting. You know, you don't have a lot of people chatting and sitting there drinking coffee and, you know, everybody feels a, a sense of urgency and responsibility to get things done. Yeah. That I felt we kind of lost. So I think that break also, you know, changed people in some way as well. You know, I, I, they revitalize them. Yeah. And, you know, what they do and, and you know, they figured out whether they enjoyed what they did or not for a living. <laughs> exactly. So that's a, that's a positive change there, you know, uh, amid a sea of negative uh, negativity, you know, that's yeah. something that's positive because you're right. You're exactly right. I noticed that. 
on a couple of different yeah. sets. Yeah, and it's kind of enjoyable, you know. And Eddie, uh, what, what, and, what would you say to anyone um, who has a desire to, to head for Hollywood, the bright lights? You know, um, <laughs> first I would tell them to go and watch your short film, um, <laughs> a test of time. But what would you say to people out there? Because, I mean, everyone wants their, their name and lights, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I I never did, and I still, again, I enjoy the work. I I, I don't, uh, you know, there are people that do. I I think some people feel I feel always kind of a bit uncomfortable. I, I don't feel like I belong there, so it's always weird to me because I'm there but I'm not. I'm always like, oh oh yeah yeah I guess oh they're talking to me. Oh uh, okay, you know when certain celebrities come up and talk, it, it's. It's funny because I'm like, oh, yeah. And then we start talking about other stuff. And, yeah, uh, you know, it all goes away for a second. But you have that moment of like, oh, uh, shoot, I better check my ticket and make sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I do belong here. That's my seat. <laughs> so I, I still always kind of have that. I, I, I'm happy I do. But, you know, make sure it's something that you, I think everybody in life, make sure it's something you really want to do because you're passionate about it not because you you want the notoriety you know i mean some people will tell you you know because there's always going to be there's going to be celebrities and actors you know it, it with with all the new you know uh reality tv those are celebrities and then there are actors you know and the actors you know you may be a character actor and work your whole career but not have that fame so you know if that's what you're searching for you know that that's that's a, a a hit or miss if you're going to be an actor in your skill you know go for that that performance and you know in this day and age you don't have to necessarily come here to hollywood you know with youtube and everything else that's out there you can do your own short films or from home and put it out there put your work out there you know it, it, it's you know it's as good and as bad as the technology can be it's it, the whole world is out there and people are looking people are out there looking to find things that are interesting and that people are doing i have so many i do it all the time you know for stunts i'm always looking on instagram and youtube and seeing all these kids the stuff they're doing and you know the, the free runners the parkour kids i mean physically amazing what they're doing and some of them are working with us now and you know if i go into a town or something and i'm working and need some people i try to you know reach out to them and find them and bring them over to work because they're extremely talented and you know people should see what they can do and they're just putting it out there you know they've got followers they're doing their own channels they're doing you know i mean even this show you couldn't do this 20 years ago you you we could barely do it tonight <laughs> <laughs> We adapted <laughs> and we overcame. Yeah, yeah we exactly. exactly. And you, wouldn't warrior to to reach, you wouldn't have the ability to reach the people that you do, and now you do from your home. I mean, we're yeah. all, you know, all over the world, all of us, and we get to have a, a great moment and conversation and inter interact and connect with people. So I think people, and you know, as, as everything, as we talk about 220 being, you know, strange and weird, the world is changing too, and people have to realize that they don't necessarily have to come to Hollywood to get noticed anymore. Yeah. It's just how you have to find it in you and put yourself out there. You know? Well, you don't know how much I appreciate you being real. Uh, yeah. I gravitate to people because that's how I try to live my life. Yeah. I'm real. Yeah. I love people. I would yeah. do anything yeah. to help anybody. And just the fact of you staying with us, you know, having that interruption, that speaks volumes <laughs> about you because a lot of people in your position would say, F these guys, you know, we're just, I don't have time for this. You know, it's technology. Again, you, you got to be like, roll with the punches. If, if anybody, you know, this year's taught us all, we got to roll with the punches. And, yeah. you know, roll with everything. Things are going to change. Things are going to get weird. I mean, LA, we've got, you know, we've had riots this year. We've had earthquakes. We've got fires. I'm just waiting for the snowstorm. Yeah, <laughs> you may get it too. Okay, it's possible. <laughs> I'm waiting for the six feet of snow to see the, the Hollywood sign covered in snow, and then be like, "Ah, we're complete." <laughs> <laughs> it, let's just say it wouldn't surprise me if it happened. It would not yeah, surprise yeah, me. Yeah, I think at this point, people are not surprised by anything anymore. Now, now, Eddie, before we let you go, I mean, how many years have you been working on Shameless? 
Uh, I've been there since season two, so wow. like nine years. So how is that going to be for you? you? You know, that's a long time to be working closely with people. It's almost like a family, right? I mean, yeah, it, it really is. It, it it has become my family. I mean, uh, they're. Yeah, you know, I think prior to all this happening, we were about to get started and everybody was, the emotions were starting to run high, you know, because we knew it was the last season. Now it's a bit weird because we're all like happy to get back to work. And we started, but we know it's the last season. But now, again, the energy's changed because of the time we've had. Rather than being sad about, everybody's enjoying the time they have together because we had, we've had six months to wait. You know, it's like the waiting's over. It's like, wow, it's the last season. But now it's not as somber as it was. There's, again, there's, there's a real enjoyment of like, wow, we get to get back together and do this and finish this. But yeah, it's going to, I don't think it'll hit me till next year because I always get done and then I have six months and then go back to Shameless. I've always done that for nine to 10 years now. To not go back will probably hit me, you know, when I watch the show and I see the final episode, I'll be like, wow, that's it. I'm not going back there. I'm not going to be with all these people again who've been my family for, you know, 10 years. And we've been through a lot together and we've always supported each other. And the producers and everybody on the show are amazing. Some of the people have gone off to work. Uh, but the people that brought me on, actually, John Labou and Alex and Carr all also are working on Snowfall. So I got to go with them a little. So there's, you know, uh, we'll see each other all again, not in this way, but we will. And everybody stays in touch. And, you know, it's always a pleasure to see everybody and work with them. So it, it's <clears throat> it's going to be hard. It's going to be one of those moments where, you know, I, I can't lie. It's not it's not going to it's not going to be fun not to be able to read a script, another shameless script and laugh and go, oh, this is going to be fun. You know, it's like that that part of my life is over. So. It, it, it'll be, but, you know, I'm grateful for the time I've had to do the show and what it's done for me. And, you know, it, it gave me a little bit of normalcy for 10 years. I, you know, in Hollywood, to know to have a job for 10 years consistently is, is pretty unusual. Yeah. So I'm kind of grateful for that. I'm like, hey, I was like, oh, shit, I, get, I better get going. I got to get more work. I was like, I'm going to be amongst the, one of those Oh yeah, the unemployed people. I think, well, that well, that's going to be me. I'm going to have to like, you know, go back to being a gypsy. Uh, I, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I know, I got that. I can just play around, and we know we start in June again. Now it's going to be like, uh, get, get, okay, strap up your boots. Time to get out there again. But you know, it's all good. You're going to have some great opportunities yeah. coming your way. I don't doubt that for a second. Thank you. Oh no, thank you. Well, it's I, just I, who you are now, being established like that. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, you know, it, I, th I think it again. You, 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 you know, uh, we wouldn't be human if we didn't worry. There's, there's always a part of you in there and a voice in the back of your head that you know, it drives us all. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, obviously, all you guys as well, because you know you're successful in what you do. But, you know, some people don't have that. Yeah. I think most, you know, we all do and have that drive and that that force inside of us that. You know, wants wants to get up and do something every day, every morning, and you know, contribute in some way. So I, I, that's as long as I don't lose that, I'm good. <laughs> you have the look of a winner to me, Eddie. Yeah. So I don't oh, think you're gonna be you. losing that. Well, Eddie, I thank can't you. thank you enough for a today and uh, all the laughs that you and the rest of the team at Shameless have given me and countless others over the years, man. Um, well, thank, thank you, thank you. I, again, I'm honored to be on the show. I, I could, it's you know definitely a highlight of my life. So I, I'm very proud of all the work they do, and I'm grateful for the writing that's on the show. Yeah. Well, we're grateful for you, brother. Um, yes, we are. You know, the people behind the cameras rarely, you know, we ever rarely get to meet them. But um, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you today, Eddie. Loved it. Cool. Well, and congratulations you. on Emmy number yeah, three. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's, 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 I'm waiting to receive it. I, I'm, I'm trying to see if uh, 
I kind of sent an email. I said, so since the, the uh, awards were virtual, does that mean my Emmy was too? <laughs> it's cheaper go, that way. It's cheaper. Yeah, it's cheaper. yeah it is. I go, it's way cheaper. I go, I'm just going to get like a screen capture. And every, every time I want, I can log in and go, oh, there it is. There it is. I said, I've never actually yet one because it's funny. Everybody's been calling each other. Goes, Have you gotten yours? Have they contacted you? And it's like, yeah, I feel weird calling. And going, so, hey, so about that Emmy thing that I won, uh, Am I ever going to get it? You know, so everybody's calling each other kind of like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, some of the guys, the, the one guy who just won for Mandalorian, it was his first time. Uh, and he's like, oh, man, he goes, figure it's the first time I get nominated and win. There's no awards. There's no <laughs> nothing. I do it online. And he goes, so did they mail it to us? Are they going to, do we have to go pick it up? Or are they going to deliver it? And I was like, you got me. This is, uh, I don't know. I go, I, go, I guess if, by January, we don't get it. We should call <laughs> and say, hey, so did you miss this on the list? Maybe uh, they don't know either, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, with all the hundred, they're not, you know, they're not light. So I'm sure they're going to cost quite a pretty penny to ship. Yeah. You know, whether, they, whether they're going to get people to actually deliver them or, you know, that's, I mean, we're all like, I don't know. I go, and I kind of feel like it's bad form to call and ask and go, hey, so about that. I really would I kind of want it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, te technically, it is yours now. You have won it. Yeah. It, it, it. It technically belongs yeah. to you, so you do kind of yeah, have yeah. that right. Yeah. Yeah. But, I'd, yeah. I'd like I'm to right. collect my property now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 So yeah, it's, it's it, again interesting time, and I'm kind of like ah, uh, you know, it'll get here eventually. Well, I want you to know that you're welcome back on this show anytime, and I know you're oh, busy. Thank you guys. But no, uh, no, you're welcome back. Uh, and next time, maybe we'll talk about some of your bodyguard days and some of the characters oh, yeah. that uh, the, the paths that you have crossed and some of the, the people that you have uh, provided service to. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole, it's an interesting world. That'd be a whole other book, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we've enjoyed having you, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. I, and I'll shut up now because maybe Kevin Travis have some final questions for you. No, I'm good. We're about to get kicked off of Zoom again in our five <laughs> minutes. So yeah, I didn't want, gotta, I didn't we, want we Eddie gotta... to get cut off for a second time. That would have just been way uh, too rude. It would be. We've got to uh, Zoom off of Zoom. Real quickly. Yeah. That might be a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just I, I just want to say again, Eddie, thank you so much. Uh, you were uh, thank a, you. A, just a fabulous interview the first time on radio. And we've been just, just as much fun and just as entertaining tonight on the show so thank you for being on and yeah we'd, we'd love to, to have you have you back yeah. on and um susan bell was messaging me she said to tell you hello oh yeah yeah well thank you it's nice to put a a face to the voice well, <laughs> well it is uh it has been my honor to to interview okay. you twice now in the, in the past past month so thank you so well, much and we will definitely book you back to come back on you and bill can share some stories about bodyguard yeah. and driving day oh, because you all share oh, that yeah in common. yeah we'll, we'll make we'll make this a habit uh, hey, hey anytime brother you're welcome yeah. anytime no thank you guys Thank you very much. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to... Uh, rest of the night. Uh, what, what time is it for you? Over time? here, it's 1 a.m. But um, it's, okay. like I say, everyone lives the life of Frank over here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's all exactly. good, Eddie. It's yeah. all good. Thank you so much again, brother. Yeah. Really, um, no, top notch, you. man. Top notch. Right, guys, no, I'm going to I'm going to hang up on Zoom and thank I'll you. call Travis and Bill back on Skype, okay? Got it. Thanks okay. a lot, Sounds guys. Bye-bye. Have a good night. You guys too, ready? Okay, folks, we will be back in just a moment. Let me um, contact Bill. And who knew that Zoom would start trying to extort us for money to last longer? What is that all about? Um, hang on now. Wait till I get Bill here. Bill and Travis. There we go. There's Bill, I think. Um, yes, there we go. Oh, Bill. And I'll call Travis. Not sounding too good. Don't try Travis. I hope he's enjoyed that first hour there, folks. That was uh, top notch. And I, I am a bit of a shameless fan. You probably gathered that. <laughs> Here we go. Hopefully, Travis will be back soon. Um, there we go. We'll try Travis. OK, 
cake ice. Come on. We'll be there. Give us a moment, guys. Two seconds. Uh. <laughs> oh, dear wow. me. Okay, we'll try Travis again, shall we? Travis, and um, let me call Bill, and we will be good. Okay, sounds hey, good. Hey, there you go, Travis. I hear you, brother. And um, we'll get Bill in, and we'll be good to go. Hopefully, he'll join right, us. I see my... oh, there we go. I sorry. see you now. Yes, I see you, and now I should see Bill also. Yep. Yep. All right. There we go. We're back, and um, just you guys keep talking, and I'll get us fitted onto the camera. Uh, I have, I've had the strangest feeling today. Just knew we were going to have some difficulties. I just could feel it all day. So well, we're, tell you we're doubting good. and overcoming. I'll tell you what was really good. The fact that, um, Travis, you've got some horrible noise coming through your microphone. Really bad. There we go. I've muted it for now, Travis, but it's like, oh, it's, it's wild. Did you hear that, Bill? Yeah, I did hear That's some of okay. that. That's okay. I didn't want Travis to think I was just being rude and muting him for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard it. Travis's face looks like he's highly confused right now. Now, give me a second, folks. We will get the cameras sorted here. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bill, um, Eddie Perez, um, absolutely wonderful gentleman. Speaking to him there, um, somebody I, I didn't really know. You know, before Travis had um, introduced us, love the yeah. show, but I, I often, you know, I don't really get to know the people behind shows or. I've never seen the show. I don't know anything about it, and you know, so I was. That's why I was saying, you know, before we went on air, that I was going to let the two of you ask most of the questions. But uh, I really enjoyed talking with him. Uh, he's a genuine guy, and I respect that. And so that really. Uh, that that made it easy for me to want to ask him questions and i enjoyed it yeah exactly and i'm just about to get travis onto the screen now for all you travis fans out there stand by don't worry he's on his way here we go um travis can we hear you now you're muted up sir he's still muted yep I'm there we go. Mute. I'm off mute now. Okay, you sound there we go. you do sound a little bit better. You sounded like you were in the wind tunnel at JPL before. Well, <laughs> that's that's the bizarre thing. My my HVAC unit is actually off. There's nothing running in the house. Wow. And, and it's kind of weird with me too because uh, it, in the beginning when we started, I had those like it was just so loud in my headset and everything. So this is uh, this has not been our norm here uh, tonight. No, it certainly hasn't. <clears throat> but I tell you what, what a great guy Eddie was for him um, hanging oh, he around. Was awesome. I didn't think he'd yeah. hang around. I really didn't think he would hang around them. Um, Nor did I. I thought somebody that's like at one Emmys for their production skills <laughs> they're not yeah. exactly gonna hang around when we can't master zoom so i want to thank everyone for hanging out in the audience as well yeah um, we appreciate top, it yeah and i think everyone that comes to youtube i think they appreciate that we're all kind of flying by the seat of our pants at times and the fact that we ever get on air some <laughs> days is really a blessing but um eddie was uh, travis I don't know about, I mean, if that was the first time you'd spoke to him when you had him on the radio. But it was. What a great guy. What a really oh, nice was, guy. He was great. And, yeah, that was the first time I've ever spoken to him. Uh, Susan Bell, uh, who Bill and I both know, have known yeah. now, I guess, Hi, for, Susan. what, seven, seven, eight years? I yeah. Guess. I think it was 2000, probably seven. I think it was 2013. It's been a while. Yeah, that we, uh, we got to know Susan Bell. She... Uh, does uh, a variation of what I do as far as marketing and public relations out in LA, and uh, 
she, Eddie is actually one of her clients, and when he was nominated for the Emmy, she started trying to get him some interviews, and we were fortunate enough to book him uh, with my station, and I was able to conduct that interview, and then we were able to book him for this, and actually try to get him on the Kev Baker show, too. So Yeah, I must admit, I, a bit of a fanboy, it came out in me. I tried not to. I tried <laughs> not good. to. I thought it would be very professional, but then I remembered he worked on Shameless and Star Trek. Right? How can you... Uh, you know. How can you be? Exactly, exactly. You, you guys keep me uh, well grounded, though. I think it's a good kind of contrast. You two professionals and the fanboy. I think it works professionals. Well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, again, I didn't know anything about Eddie, and uh, so that's why I thought, okay, I'll just lay back and let you guys uh, do most of the interview. But I really enjoyed yeah. talking with him, and uh, again, his authenticity really uh, spoke yeah. volumes. And that's what jumped out at me in the interview that I did with him. I mean, uh, we were shooting for like a, a three to five minute interview. He and I talked for almost half an hour. Yeah. And it was yeah. just just organic and it just flowed. And it was, and it was just a, a natural conversation. We just had all kinds of fun. And he's just he's just a good guy. Just yeah. like, you know, just like Liberty. You know, who would, who exactly. would think that, that Liberty DeVito would be that down to earth and, yep. that, you know, just laid back and fun. And I still think about that. You know, we were only supposed to do an hour with him, and he stayed the entire time. <laughs> I, do, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we've been blessed and fortunate to have some great people on, and we'll continue to do that. And there'll be some more great people coming uh, in the in the coming uh, weeks and, and months. Absolutely. And we're very versatile here on Warrior Mode. I mean, we can go yeah. from the the deepest kind of rabbit holes of the paranormal and supernatural all the way yep. to somebody like Eddie. And I think it's great that people like Eddie, like Liberty, like everyone who's joined us on the show. Lydia, out in the chat room, listening as well. Lydia, Hi, been Lydia. On Hi us. Eric. Um, I think it really is it's good signs when it comes mm -hmm. to warrior mode moving forward that we do cover a lot of topics, you know? Yeah, and we've got quality guests. Yep. So, um, Bill, what have you been keeping your eye on this week? When it comes well, to the world <laughs> and uh, 2020, as it continues to get crazier. Yeah, and it's the same old story here uh, in some of our cities in America with this uh, uh, just, uh, it's domestic terrorism. Uh, look, people have the right to protest, and, and it's, it's part of uh, having free speech. But when you're going around and destroying businesses <clears throat> and uh and harming people, assaulting people. Some people are getting killed. Um, that's a whole other level. And we've talked about this before, and I'm saying it again. Uh, it's uncalled for, and I just wish people would. Uh, but again, they're not going to take a step back because I feel that they are funded um, by some of these elites that are enjoying this. And uh, it's just mind boggling, and uh, I pray Every day, I pray that God will put a stop to this, and, and our leaders are failing us by allowing these types of things to continue. It's, um, you know, of course, you know, right now in Kentucky, we've got some very serious riots going on in Louisville. Yeah. Boy, so, Travis, and I knew that was coming, and, and uh, again, it kind of befuddles me because you heard the early reports of, oh, well, the National Guard's going to be there and they're going to take care of this. Well, I don't think they've taken care of anything because this continues. Uh, it, it, what is it like there today? Is it still pretty much the same? Well, you know, I'm about two hours south of Louisville, mm -hmm. uh, so we don't see a whole lot of that type of activity in, in southeastern Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, but they, you know, they are, Louisville has a curfew. Uh, Thursday, we had a... Um, a fundraiser at the radio station. One of the representatives from Make a Wish Foundation was from Louisville, and and she was on site, and she had to get back to Louisville to make sure that she got in, in into her home before they shut the city down before the curfew was in place. Yeah. So it, it is a very real issue. Um, it sure is, and I've got some close friends in Louisville, and I pray for them, and I pray for everybody. I, I pray for peace, I, and especially. Um, I don't want to see innocent people getting harmed. And you see these clips uh, where some of these downright wicked acts are taking place to where um, good and decent <laughs> and innocent people 
are being assaulted and, yes. and really harmed in senseless acts of violence. I saw a clip, uh, I believe it was late last night, of this elderly couple sitting down somewhere in Florida and and the uh, you know the I guess it was the Black Lives Matter or whatever you know they a couple of them come over and they sit down at the table and start threatening the couple and all this I mean this is just uh, it is so far out of hand and shame on the leadership from the president to the governors to the mayors to these people that are supposed to be in charge to protect and serve the people you're failing you're all failing and so do your jobs and bring some uh, law and order and peace to the situation. I think what really uh, could also help uh, would be that uh, perhaps you, why wouldn't you have some of your uh, clergy or religious leaders speaking and, and at some of these gatherings like this and, and just trying to restore calm and, and just come out with a, a loving message and a positive message and an authentic message that, hey, uh, stop, you know, just take a step back and think about what you're doing and treat others how you would like to be treated. Yeah, I've been trying to encourage people, try not to get dra dragged into any kind of dispute, any conflict right now. It's hard, really hard, because um, they're pushing people's <laughs> buttons everywhere, social yeah. media. My advice to people right now is um, limit your social media because that, that really is doing a lot to people's psyche. It's triggering um, behavior in people as well. And it's adding to this whole 2020 debacle, Travis, that continues to kind of spiral out of control. It is, and, it, and it's the perfect storm because you have instant information and misinformation and disinformation readily available at a time when people are quarantined, they're stuck at home, they're working from home, they're not getting out, so they're being bombarded by all of this information. And it is inducing this, it, it's almost a, a mob-like mentality that we're seeing that the movie The Purge is actually starting to play out in front of their very eyes. How sad. It is sad, but he's right. You know, um, some of the scenes that you see in The Purge, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're not quite where The Purge is yet, but it's quite reminiscent of what you see in it, the real world right now. It is. Yeah. Yep. And this is what happens, guys, when people are led by emotion. Yep. So, in my opinion, there is a real plan that has been put into place, and this plan has probably been on the books for many, many years. Uh, as this whole COVID situation, in my opinion, just like 911 and these other momentous events, I believe they were planned in stage events. Real people died, and real people are dying now. Um, but these are manufactured, pre planned events that they bring about for various reasons. And um, so, this is uh, uh, part of this plan is to have the people to be taken over completely by emotion. So when we stop using our brain and we stop thinking and we stop being led by our mind and we're given over to impulse and emotion, disastrous things can result from that. It's a very good point, very good point. And then they know people in charge right now. I think that's why there's so many mixed messages coming out. Um, it's so confusing at times. You can do this, but you can't do that. Do this, don't do that. Mask on, mask <laughs> off. And the only thing that makes sense is that they really want people to be taking sides, to get triggered, to, to be there out in the street. And everything right now, everything's been monitored. I mean, over here in the UK, you, you don't even need to make a post anymore. You, you might write a post out and think, no, I'm not going to post it. Too late. Your keystrokes are already caught. And don't fall into the trap of being put on the very lists that you're warning people about by shouting about all this on social media. It's almost yeah. ironic that we're using social media to try and warn people about the ills of social media <laughs> and how it plays out in the real world, you know? Maybe it's just me that sees the irony in that, Travis, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm right there with you, man. I'm telling you, you and I had this conversation before the show. You're absolutely right. Yeah.
Yeah, but it's crazy. It truly is crazy. But, Bill, you've got a new guest lining up for the show that you were telling me and Travis about before we came on today. And he sounds up there on the ilk of Alon Strickler, uh, Stan oh, yeah. Gordon. Yeah. Who, who have you got for us now, Bill? Who can we look forward to in the future? Yeah, He's a woo be... guest. Yeah. He's got Absolutely. the woo yeah. He's got that woo. I like the word. Yeah, he is. He definitely is. And, um, you know, we're going to be hearing soon from Major George Filer, uh, who has Filer's Files. He's the director of the uh, New Jersey MUFON. And he has a weekly uh, newsletter that he comes out with. Um, and it's probably been going on now for, I would say, it at least 30 years, I, I would uh, guesstimate at that. And uh, Major George Filer is a major player in the uh, UFO field and the phenomena. So in his Filer's Files, which is, uh, again, a weekly newsletter, he documents uh, all of the things strange and bizarre pertaining to UFOs and uh, other facets of the paranormal as well. That's going to be great. And Travis, um... Did you find out anything more about the New York UFO? I remember you sent me a video. We discussed it briefly with Stan last week. It was the mass sighting. It was people well, all... Yeah. The one Bill said. That was actually Bill's. He was that Bill? That. Yeah. So yeah, the, you... New Jersey, the New yeah. Jersey thing. And I don't know. I'm being told uh, uh, Bob had sent me something uh, yesterday saying that they had a story that they swear that it was the Goodyear blimp. And again, maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe they have a new version of the Goodyear blimp, but I can tell you this for personal sightings of the Goodyear blimp, uh, the object in that video does not look like it. And that's not to say that it's not because mm -hmm. maybe Goodyear has changed their look. I don't know. But uh, in the past, um, which was probably 15 years ago, when uh, I had several sightings of the Goodyear blimp, it just, you know, in person, um, it did not, this this object does not look like what I saw. Didn't but again, look, that's yeah, not it, to it, say it didn't look that this has to be changed. Yeah. So, I, I was going to say, if the Goodyear blimp has all of a sudden become a disc, then maybe, but yeah. it's, it's not. I mean, um, the video I've that's seen, what Travis, they're saying the now, ones, is that the this is I've the seen. Goodyear blimp. Yeah, the one I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of videos. Um, one of them a bit dubious about all the people stood by the road, but... Th yes, that's that aside, the one that I saw. That aside, um, that wasn't blimpish that we were looking at, whatever was in the sky, you know? Not at all. It didn't Not look like it to me, but again, uh, you know, has Goodyear made changes to the to the look of their, yeah, it's their a shape blimp? Shifting, it's, it's a shape-shifting biological blimp. Or, yeah. <laughs> or is it a, or is it a Mandela effect? And the Goodyear blimp has always looked like this video, and we're just remembering it looking like oh, something else. No, don't, Great don't point, open Travis. up that. Don't open up that rabbit hole. <laughs> oh dear. Let's just say, like we said to Eddie, nothing, and I mean nothing, would surprise me or you guys at this point. So anything oh. is possible. No, you're absolutely right there, Bill. Absolutely right. And I saw, uh, I was reading through Filer's files. Uh, he sends it to me via email, and I thank you for that, George. He's been doing so for many years. He's also covered my uh, story in Filer's files many times over the years, and I thank you for that as well. Uh, but he had uh, something listed in there, and, and I don't know who these people are, but they are from Pasadena, Maryland. And apparently uh, last week they had quite a sighting out over the water of many UFO objects and some were white and some were red and some were hovering right over top of the water and some were coming down from the sky hovering over the water. So that is in uh, the latest edition of Filer's Files. That sounds very intriguing indeed. Um, I'm very. very interested in the UFO slash USO, the submergible yeah. objects. That, that's something that really intrigues me. Now, what I find interesting about that, Kev, aside from the fact that, you know, these witnesses um, claim to have seen, you know, many of these UFOs, I find it also interesting that the area they're talking about is about 30 minutes from where I live. And um, 
I would say back in the spring, and I think that we talked about this either on the Kev Baker show. Yeah, probably on the Kev Baker show we talked about this. Uh, there was a report that came in from right in the area that I live over the water to where these people saw many, and they got it on video as well, many of these UFOs, same thing, came down, were hovering over the water, uh, reports that they went into the water. So it's uh, it's an eerily similar type of report, it, basically in the same general area. Yeah, I'll need to check into that. That, that, that definitely sounds good work. Now these these sightings though they're going up everywhere, or at least it feels like. They are. Yeah, it feels that way. Sometimes when you go looking for it though, you can't tell because you're looking for it, right? So they seem like they're everywhere. Um, but it does feel like they're increasing in whatever this phenomena is because there's not one answer fits all of the sightings. So I'm not sure what's going on with it all right now. I just think that it's an increase in everything supernatural. And I think all these doorways are being opened because of uh, CERN and D-Wave and all of these types of things that are going on. These doorways are being opened up and the veil is thinning. And uh, so perhaps, uh, and we've talked about this before, that mankind, you know, we only use a small percentage of our brain, some less than others. Uh, and, and so, so that said, there's a whole other world around us, um, perhaps 90% of what we can't see, and maybe that is thinning now to where something is maybe due to CERN, this is all speculation, I don't know, uh, CERN or the uh, you know Mandela effect, which I believe was caused by CERN and the deep waves, that is uh, thinning the veils, or perhaps increasing our perception in a way that we are now seeing an increase in all this phenomena. It's a different way of looking at it, Travis, right? As opposed to more visitation, more craft coming. Maybe like Bill says, maybe we're starting to see more of what's always been there in the first place. Well, you know, that going back to, uh, to Mothman, that was John, one of John Keel's original theses, is that what was happening in Point Pleasant was certain people were just seeing something that was there, had been there, was always going to be there because it was existing in a different a different plane, a different level. Yeah. And so I think that, and you know, at the same time, I'm going to ask you a very dangerous question because I would like that. Is that a bad thing? If the, if, if we are getting to a heightened, a heightened sense of spiritual enlightenment and understanding, is that necessarily a bad thing, Bill? Well, I'll tell you why it could be a bad thing is that if we're getting into this type of area and and the spiritual awareness uh, is increasing, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a uh, God divine type of spiritual increase. Now it could be, um, but in some of these instances, with some of these cases and certainly in the people that I deal with who are, you know, going through some horrible things and have been through some horrible things, well, we see that that is in the demonic realm. So that is also increasing. So this is why for me, I can't tell anybody what to do, nor do I want to, but I can tell you what I do. Uh, for me, God is truly first in my life. So I always have to keep a real and authentic relationship with God. So I have holy discernment. So I know what is good and what is not, and what is uh, real and what is not, what is true and what is not. So this is how I navigate through life. And I just believe that, uh, like Travis is saying, in this increase, yeah, I believe it's real and, uh, and that there is an increase in all these things and some divine and some of it demonic. So this is where we really have to um, have that strong relationship with God to where he can help us to navigate through these things. Well, and, and let me take that a step further, because what I guess what I was getting at is, let's say that for whatever reason, uh, whether it's CERN, uh, or whether it is a, is a natural spiritual evolution, that that veil is thinning. Okay, so you're naturally gonna see the negative, the demonic, the, the nefarious, 
should we not also begin seeing more of the positive, more yeah. of the holy, yeah. more of the good, more yeah. of the pure? Yeah. So it, it, is that something that we can expect? Is it happening and we're not talking about it? I mean, are there more people seeing angels? Are there more yes. people seeing angelic spiritual beings Absolutely. as opposed to constantly seeing the demonic? So I guess, that, I guess that's kind of the, the dialogue I was trying to get going there. You know, yeah. It, can we expect to see more divine, pure, white light spirituality as well? Almost yes. miracles. Almost. Yes. And it's happening. It, it really is. I mean, there are people reporting this to me. I certainly have shared my divine experiences with you guys and with uh, the, the people that watch us and tune in. Um, it's real. It's true. Uh, and some of my clients now. Um, and I praise God for this. It's not me. It's not that I'm anything special. It's just that God works through me to help people. And um, some of the clients that I have after the spiritual deliverances take place uh, have reported back that they too are seeing angels because as part of that um, spiritual deliverance, uh, and others identify it as exorcism, uh, through those types of things, um, when the demonic entities are bound and cast out, then um, I always pray that God will manifest his angels uh, to these people so they have blessed assurance. And, and in some cases, that's exactly what has happened. And furthermore, during the process, I am asking God to send his mighty and giant and warrior angels to come and take into custody all of those demons and all of the demonic forces that are present and affecting the victim or victims. And uh, so, yes, there are some of these clients that are reporting back that they are having uh, angelic experiences. I'm going to do a show on that this week on the Kev Baker Show. I'm going to go and look for reports, and I'm going to go it. for the, the other side of the coin. Usually we look for the dark, the creepy, mm -hmm. the cryptids, the creepers, but no, I'm going to look at the other side because you're right, Bill. There are stories like that out there. But human nature, we tend to look more at the evil, the dark, the nasty. And um, people need some encouragement right now. They need some positivity, and uh, people seeing that kind of thing. I'm, I'm all up for a bit of that. So um, all the audience, you can look forward to hearing about that later on this week in the Kev Baker show. What else has been going on Love with that. you then? Yeah, what else has been going on with you then, Travis? Any weird and wonderful woo come across your uh, path this week? Uh, nothing it's been a big newish. week for you at the radio, right? It's been a big week for him, Bill, hasn't it? Yeah, we got to congratulate him yep. on that. Thank you, guys. We uh, we we have had a very busy week, a very uh, good September, as a matter of fact. You know, uh, for for those that you know, watching the or listening that may not know what I do when I'm not with these two guys, uh, I I'm the general manager for three radio stations in in southeastern Kentucky. And of course, when COVID hit, you know, we were really, really concerned with ad revenue and, and clients closing. Would they reopen? How could we help them? September is the month here that we host, the City of London hosts the World Chicken Festival. It's 30 years this year, be 31 years next year. Uh, commemorates Colonel Harlan Sanders and the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, and its location uh, in Laurel County, not in the City of London, but in Laurel County. And uh, it's a huge draw. About on, on a on an average year, 175 to 200 thousand people. On a good year, 200 wow. 250 thousand. It, it really brings in people from all over the world. And of course, we lost that and, and didn't get to to celebrate. And then there's you know, we have concerts. It's a, it's basically a street fair with free concerts. So there's food and vendors and and carnival rides. And then there's also free concerts. And so we we lost that because of COVID. But my stations. My team uh, were able to partner with our tourism department here for the city and for the county. And then the World Chicken Festival Committee, which I sit on their board, and then also the Make a Wish Foundation to actually pull off a, a, a commemorative event, fundraising event for Make a Wish Foundation. We did an all day request a thon on Thursday for people to call in and make donations and we'll go online and make donations and we did interviews we pre-recorded the majority of the day was pre-recorded but we did have a few people come in and, and take part in some live interviews and we tied it into the chicken festival so we were able to still do certain things 
observing social distancing and, and the guidelines, but we were still able to do some things to commemorate the festival. And, and we were able to, and, and I thought it was just the first time that this had been done in, in the city of London and in Laurel County, but what I discovered on uh, Thursday night was that this was the first ever Make-A-Wish request of Thon held in the entire state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to raise Thursday just over $8,000. We're closer to 9000 right now because other donations have continued to come in. Uh, the, the only other uh, location in, in this region that's doing one is Indianapolis, Indiana, which is a totally different market than, than my stations here in southeastern Kentucky. But we were able to raise uh, almost enough to grant a wish. It takes $10,000 to grant the wish of one child. And so we're, we're pushing that by September 30th, we'll actually be able to have $10,000 and, and grant the wish of a child here from, from southeastern Kentucky. Uh, we, we, we also uh, have exceeded our monthly goals at the radio station. Uh, we, $10,000 $10, more than this month last year, uh, about $8,000 more than what corporate wanted to see from us, and it's just been a very successful month. We were named Best of the Best Radio Stations in Laurel County, and we also found out on Thursday the president of the company showed up to spend a little, little bit of time with us at the station and informed us that uh, I, I managed three. One of my stations here uh, had been nominated for Station of the Year in the entire state of Kentucky, and we are one of, one of two finalists for that. Uh, recognition on October 12th. We'll find out if we, if we are, are the best station, uh, at least from a voting standpoint. And then my new hire, uh, my multimedia marketing executive, who was hired literally her first day on the job, was the day the global pandemic shut down the state of Kentucky. Uh, and in five months of never having worked in radio, never having sold, never having been part of this world, she has rallied. She has averaged $10,000 a month in sales. Uh, she's over 15000 right now. Uh, it's She's just done an amazing job. And she has been nominated for and is one of two finalists in the category of Broadcast Rookie of the Year out of the entire state of Kentucky. So we had uh, a very, very busy, very successful, very productive week this past week. It took its toll. I look like I've aged 10 years in the past, in, since I was on with you guys two weeks ago, which uh, one of the reasons I was not able to uh, to be part of the show last week. I was thinking and, that, you know, I was thinking what's well, changed about Travis. He's lost that boyish good looks. That's what it is. You see, Bill, this is what happens. You know, he's been hanging out with us for a month on Warrior Mode. Uh, look at him. He's taking the world by storm, man. He's clicking on all cylinders. I'm going to say, watch it, Mr. Baker. You and I are the same age. Do not do not make those kind of comments. Ah, well, you look the same age as me now, that's for sure. I'm telling you. It's sad to say I'm the old guy out of this bunch, so. Oh, oh but Bill, I was watching you wrestling today. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I was watching a nice finish. I like that. Oh, yep, my yep. goodness. <laughs> Dude, was, and no, I'll I'm... tell you, Kev, uh, you brought that up. And I thank Brian Dorn uh, for making that possible. He was the owner of the uh, wrestling company that approached me about that. And uh, we met at, a, I was making an appearance somewhere and he had uh, approached me and, and I made two appearances for his company. And I'm gonna tell you something. Yes, that stuff is pre-scripted and predetermined, but um, still hurts. I had a collision with him. Now I probably weigh 250, 260. This guy, he weighed probably 350. Um, and we collided with each other in the ring, and I'm telling you, it was real. That's and that 600 was a real thumb. pound of men coming together. That, that's a head-on collision. That, that's you know. a, that was that, yeah. That that's was, a Glasgow that kiss right there, isn't it, Jeff? Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is. I'm telling you, it's like hey, my boy. He loves the wrestling, and um, I, I used to tell him years ago, oh, it's all fake, and I've never been into it. There's a new kind of um, franchise has come along now, so I'd have to watch Vince McMahon. But that's one thing we've always said, and he appreciates that. You know, he's old enough now to know the storylines. and but, Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, when a guy that big runs into you full force and you're laid out on a wooden kind of uh, stage, that hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that, not a lot of kick in that ring. Exactly. And uh, I recall another thing that took place is, uh, <laughs> and maybe this was my uh, welcoming into their fraternity or whatever, but... 
they had me in the corner. It was a tag team match, and and they had me in the corner, and and man, they were they were hitting me with some live rounds there in the corner too, from time to time, and uh, it was uh, it, it was very interesting. And of course, it wasn't. I knew going in that, and we had discussed it, and he said, "Look, you know." potato me and that means you know really hit him and stuff like that and uh so they really are about the authenticity no hats off to you brother and um yeah i was going through <laughs> some of your videos today because i'm putting together a nice new intro for the show people might be wondering wait what bill bill beans a wrestler no it was a, it was a video from a good few years ago but yeah um i tell you what the wrestling probably a good way to look at reality right now especially in america right i mean talk about yes. having a heel as president i mean he's the ultimate <laughs> bad guy right he's the perfect guy to be in there well talk about scripted entertainment right and i i feel that uh, i'm sorry to say when you look at the current uh, state of affairs and you look at the backgrounds of the candidates there's no good guy in this i'm sorry to say yeah, um, you know, I used to work with Popeye. Like, big shout out to Popeye if he hears this. But um, it was when Obama was running against... Um, who was the other one he was up against? McCain. Yeah, wh whoever it was anyway. John McCain. And, and I was kind of saying, you know, lesser of two evils, Popeye. And he said, well, Kev, the lesser of two evils, that, that's all very well. But he says, um, another way of thinking about that is... It's almost like, well, I'm going to shoot myself once in the head instead of twice. Because at the end of the day, it's still the same result, right? You know, it's still evil. It's still... This is where we need God. We need God to intervene in this whole mess. Yeah. And I certainly pray that he will because, uh, you know, now uh, I'm hearing by the end of October, there's going to be a vaccine and all these things. Well, again, my stock answer is, or my dead body, am I taking any vaccine? And furthermore, I want everybody to take a step back and think about this for a second. Now, again, I can't tell you what to do, nor do I want to. I'm just telling you what I'm not going to do. Um, how in the world can there be a vaccine this quickly for something that, in my opinion, is not even a virus anyway, it is something that's uh, engineered in a lab that may have virus properties, but uh, make no mistake, this was something, in my opinion, that was uh, you know engineered and and modified to be something. Uh, so if that's the case, how can you have a vaccine for something like that when you don't even have a vaccine for the common cold? So how can this be? I echo everything you just said. Everything you just said. Um, <laughs> no movement or noise from any of us where no, uh, no. I don't know if it's you. I don't know if it's on YouTube or Skype. I just got a message from. No, somebody. we're still going out. We're still going out. Okay. Yep, we're all good. I think. Yep. Maybe we're, we're, we're good. Maybe on their end. Uh, yeah. If you tell them to refresh, maybe it should be all right. But we're we're looking good this end. This has been we're, the part of the show that's oh, worked. I was gonna say, don't <laughs> don't don't overstretch it, Kev. None of us look good except Bill. He was saying, you know, he's the old guy, but you know, Bill, you look younger than Kev and I both. No, no way. You, I'm you not, guys, I'm not uh, fine. you guys are looking great. Yeah, we those, praise those, God. Those for warrior it. angels obviously trim a few <laughs> years off you every birthday, Bill. I'm telling uh, you. We yeah. we and look, I praise God for everything, and um, and yes, there are. Uh, I'm I'm blessed and thankful. And eight doesn't, you know, it's just a number. Uh, and and I just try to take care of myself. You know, I, I do the best that I can do in taking care of myself and, and physically. But it, it goes in mind, body, and spirit. So I just try to keep myself in warrior mode, being strong in mind, body, and spirit. So it is what it is. If everything turns white, and, and that's fine. You won't see me down at the drugstore putting hair dye on or anything like that so once it goes that way it goes that way good man good man that's what i like to hear um i'm the same as well bill you won't get me putting any dye on there my beard it's Ooh. like 10 different tones it is what it is i think the gray look on a man it's uh, a mark of distinguishment anyway yes <laughs> sean I, connery right I, yeah. I have got a story for every gray hair i have there you go <laughs> there you go <laughs> I can't believe Eddie actually worked with Sean Connery as well. I yeah. know. I, I mean, mean, if you go look, if you look at the list of movies that that man has yeah. worked on, I mean, 
The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Ocean's 13. Uh, Have you seen Sicario? That's a really good movie. I haven't seen that one yet. Now, yeah. Deadpool, I'm a huge fan of. And you know, and the stunts and the action of that is just yeah. extremely choreographed. I haven't um, seen any of these things, so i got to live for you guys to have an understanding of this. Shameless is not for you, Bill. Shameless no, is not for you. It's <laughs> really not. No, I could not. And we couldn't say that with any of them. Yeah, no, no. I didn't want to say it before Eddie came along either, but I was thinking, that's nah, not your kind of show, Bill. Definitely uh, not. And, and I bit my tongue when the Netflix thing came up. I was, <laughs> I I was of biting my tongue I on that both one. of you. Nah, <laughs> I'm telling you, no. You see, you see, we... Um, we practice what we preach. We always say that you don't go judging people, you know. Everyone's got an equal kind of um, voice, free will. And I, we would never bring anyone onto the show and, and set them up in any way or try and belittle oh, them or anything like that. I don't no, roll like that. I know you guys don't roll like that. If you did, no, I wouldn't never. be here. Um, I think it's just great that we can attract people from all walks of life to come and chill out, have a talk with us. And again, like I say, almost... It epitomizes everything we talk about. You know, you've no, got to I be agree. able to sit down and talk to people, Bill. You... Absolutely. And Kev, I've had that done to me before. When I first started out giving interviews all those years ago, it happened to me a couple of times to where these people ambushed me and all of a sudden tried to make me out to be a fraud and ask me all these questions. I mean, I was. it's a good thing the interview wasn't taking place in person. That's all I could say. Um, but I understand what it's like to be on that end, and man, I would never do that to somebody. No. Nah. Well, it's it's it, it's not just a sucky thing to do. It's totally unprofessional from a journalism and a broadcast standpoint. Yeah. You, you don't you don't bring somebody on and then ambush them. It's not a good feeling, I'll nah. tell you that. And I, I just, uh, boy, oh boy, I, I don't even like to think about it. And and I got through it. Well, I got <laughs> got through it by eventually just hanging up, and that was the end of it. But um, I've listened to shows like that. It's horrible. It's um, it doesn't make for good radio, good podcasting no. at all. But um, yeah, the Netflix thing, and I think they're <laughs> still going downhill. Um, uh, that model. Well, that's why they're buying up other content. Yeah, That's why it would seem so. Everything they possibly can because they're they're going to have to. Yeah, but they've got another thing that I saw. Uh, there was another headline that I saw. Uh, another show they have coming out. Something about the devil, the devil something or other. And I thought, here we go. I mean, these are the same people that are. I think I might be doing the film that's doing. on there. I think there's a film, the devil and all of them or something, or the devil. Something and like us. that. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was something. That, and I thought, you know, here we go. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Travis, isn't uh, Lucifer on Netflix yeah, now? It is. It is. Yeah, it's see, so, I mean, uh, Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit. And based on this fruit that they produce, it's rotten. Wouldn't you say then, really, though, all of television and media? Because there's not really... I'm trying to think of all the shows I watch. And there isn't one with a kind of wholesome Christian kind of mindset i know david heavener um we had him on the show when i was working with anthony patch a lot and that was one thing he was uh, adamant he was going to do um i've kind of fallen away from following david so i don't know how the project's gone but he was um planning on making a tv show kind of cop show and and the cop being a, a christian and basically approaching it from from that mindset um it was a unique idea i mean 30 years ago 40 years ago most yeah of forget shows, it now yeah they had that kind of wholesome family you know togetherness but now i don't know how well that would do and what this is in my opinion again uh strictly my opinion is that um the approach now seems to be on two fronts uh now if you're speaking business model uh, in my opinion, they are looking for the shock value. Now, if we take it further than that, there is a spiritual aspect to this, in my opinion, that the uh, devil and his minions that are the puppet masters to the power elite on this earth are implementing this type of programming as part of a mind control and a brainwash of uh, accepting these wicked things as normal 
and also is good. What? What are you talking about? Uh, there's, I don't have any problem with that. What's he, so, so what? Uh, you know, this person's uh, uh, killed and eating a person now. So what? Um, you know, that, that's entertainment. Yeah, certainly um, a lot of the shock value. It's hard to shock people anymore, you know? Well, and yeah. that's why and that's why what you do see has become more and more gratuitous because it does take more to shock us. Yeah. I mean, my, you know, my son and daughter, you know, seven, well, he'll be 18 in January. She just turned 16. What would have terrified, shocked me, and traumatized me at their age doesn't affect them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good observation, actually. You're right. Right. It's just amazing. It's amazing. And maybe we can do a show on this in the coming weeks. Uh, the idea came, came to me uh, yesterday. Maybe we could do a show on the previous decades and how each decade, say we started back in the 50s, and we, we started in the 50s and came to the present, and each decade... Uh, what the talking points would be for that decade and the shock values and things of that nature. If we did a study like that, we would be astounded to see where we are right now compared to those times. No, you're right. You're right. Well, and I think, you know, from a, from a media standpoint, you have to look at it two ways. Uh, if you go to the 50s, you're coming out of World War II. Um, so there was a lot of pro, very, very pro-America, pro-ally messaging and, and, and pro-family messaging. Uh, you get into the 60s, it starts changing. Now you've got, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now there's concern again. There's worry. In the 70s, you've got the revolution. The 80s, you've got the AIDS pandemic. In the 90s, uh, you have, you know, um, militia terrorism in the U.S. I mean, it, it does change. Those talking points will change drastically from decade to decade. I think it would be a very interesting type of, of social, I'm not going to say social media because Kev's told us to be careful with social media, but it's going to be a very interesting social and media experiment to go yeah. back and look at that. Yeah. And, and like a history lesson per se as well, because people, this is something that's lost also. Uh, so many people, they claim to know it all, but yet, if you ask some of those people, do they read a book, or how many books have they read? Well, I don't read. That's boring to me. I don't read. But you know it all, but you won't take the time to study anything. And I, I feel that that is lost now uh, in our present time. And I think it would be interesting for the people that tune in to really uh, take a journey with us like that to examine each decade and it would be a little history lesson because we truly can't know where we're going unless we know where we've been. But now here's my question, Bill. Would we bump into a Mandela effect? When we start, and I, and I, yeah. I joke about it, but I'm saying, would we? No, I, I believe find we people would. remembering things differently than, or would we see things in books that we hadn't, that we know aren't the case? I would, I would venture to say uh, that we would bump into quite a few Mandela effects, and one that comes to mind. Um, I've told you guys before that I read one book a week, and sometimes two, and in some of these books. You know, I have seen Mandela effects in there, people talking about Grand Central Station when, you know, the Mandela effect now is that it's Grand Central Terminal and it's always been Grand Central Terminal. But yet in the books, in some of these books that I've read, you know, the person is talking vividly about being inside of Grand Central Station and the Smithsonian Institute, not Smithsonian Institution, and in other books talking about DEA raids, which was Drug Enforcement Agency raids, not Drug Enforcement Administration. So yes, Travis, I think we'd bump into many Mandela effects during this study. They were definitely always the agency to me as well, definitely. Yeah. Well, in any any government organization that is law enforcement is agency yeah. central yeah. is it the central intelligence administration no it's maybe, not maybe next that week it will be, be. Yeah, maybe next week will be but you know you is, look at the the past 50 years travis right 
And um, the only thing that's really in my mind that, that, that's exponentially increased, aside from the technology, is just the amount of information that us humans are subjected to. And I think that yes. plays a hell of a lot into it, everything. It, it does. And, you know, from a from a marketing standpoint and, and, and a branding standpoint, I you know, I look at some of the Mandela effect things that we've looked at and, and I go, okay, a lot of it is typesetting because a lot of it was print, like the Flintstones. One of the things I posted on Facebook was, is it the Flintstones or the Flintstones? Well, sometimes, yeah. the, sometimes the typesetting is off. And you get a mistake, and then it gets corrected, and it might have in the pilot it might have been one thing, and then they changed it, uh, and, and that happens. Businesses rebrand, they change their name, they change their slogans. Uh, you know, Smithsonian Institute versus institution. Well, institute is an abbreviated form of institution. Is the official title of the institution, and it had been abbreviated colloquially just by people talking about it to the institute. So I, I take that into account a great deal. But as we have looked on several shows together, Bill, because we have gotten uh, different King James versions of the Bible that have yeah. been printed at different times, and the wording is different in Way many different. of those in many of those versions. So and when we're seeing scriptures that that uh, talk about Jesus having a tattoo on his thigh and this writing on his robe, we know something is very wrong. He got arrested in Russia the other day. Did you see that? <laughs> I did hear a little blurb about that, yeah. yeah. Guy kicking about in Serbia for over 10 years, pretending to be yeah. Jesus. Um, I, yeah. thought I'd, I thought I'd seen it all with the LARPers on YouTube, but that guy had it well going way before YouTube, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> telling you. I, I saw a clip with him. I can't. I don't know his name. I I can't remember it. Uh, but Not it was Jesus, amazing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, he had these people hook, line, and sinker, yeah. yep. and and thousands would show up to see this guy, and it would be like this countryside setting. Just imagine Jesus of Nazareth, the movie to where he comes and he's giving the beatitudes. A similar thing. And this guy, you know, everybody's waiting and waiting, and he comes down, you know, and takes a few steps and sits on this golden chair like a throne, and he says three or four words, and the crowd is mesmerized, and he gets up, and he just walks away, and the crowd is just absolutely stunned. They're mesmerized. They, uh, it, I look at that, and I just shake my head, and I say, wow, the people— and I do believe that this is due to frequency and vibrations that are being pumped out around the world that are having an effect on some people's minds to where they are wide open for anyone to lead them anywhere. Well, I mean, you have to think about it, Bill. I mean, an entire generation, a couple of generations, especially in America, yeah. have been prepped for the second coming. Yeah. And, and not downplaying that, but... There are a lot of people that will look for that in any form, fashion, or appearance. Yeah. And here's a question I have for you, because we talked about this a lot, and I know this is going to be, we're actually at the end of the show, and I think it would be an interesting topic. You know, we always talk about the, the, the beast and the antichrist. Yeah. You never hear much talk about the false prophet. Nope. But for one to appear, the other has to come first. Very true. And in this day and age, are, would we be looking for a religious prophet, or would we be looking for a media mogul, a PR well, person, a spin doctor? I mean, what, what would we, I mean, <laughs> and it's my, in, say, it's my industry, so I'm, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. What? Yeah, you know, let's, let's it, say that I, I think that there are many of them in the world right now, and, and from the highest places— the, the highest religious places to the highest political places uh, on the earth. And so I think that there are many of these types of false prophets and antichrist as well. I think it's all here and all now, and it's just a matter of time before it all becomes revealed. So what would be a, an identifier? What would set this false prophet apart from any other false prophet? What's the kind of criteria it needs to make, meet? 
a charismatic individual that uh, would just absolutely have this type of power that um, people would submit to him. What about, well, an, what about, an, him. What about an artificial intelligence then? Well, yeah, I, I do think the artificial intelligence comes into play, and I, I made that statement as far back as 1992, uh, because when you look at the book of Revelation, if you look at it as prophecy still to be fulfilled, there is an image of the Antichrist that yeah. is created that is given life. Now, that is one of two things to me. Interesting, right? Uh, yeah, very interesting, because at the yeah. time, you know, I don't think anybody is going in, in, in the 21st century is going to be amazed if a statue comes to life. We're going to think it's CGI. We're going to think it's yeah. it, it's it's Hollywood. But if you have a clone or AI that looks, thinks, acts, speaks like this leader, hologram, then that, holographic, hologram, that that's a different story entirely. Yeah. The other thing, Bill, the other criteria about the false prophet is not just that he's charismatic, because he's not charismatic for himself, he's charismatic pointing to another individual, which is why I say, looking at the way that the world has evolved from a political and social and religious standpoint, yeah. would people even listen to a religious leader nowadays? I don't necessarily think they would. No, I don't think they would either. I think you're yeah. looking more at a, for the false prophet, you're looking more at a life coach. You're looking more at a PR consultant, a spokesperson, a media consultant. And, and again, I'm throwing my own industry under the bus here because that's what I do for a living. But I think that's what we're, we're you're talking about a front man for the front man of all times. Now, we're not going in the direction of Elon Musk, are we? <laughs> Did you see what he did there, Kev? No, that, that wasn't. Usually it's me. Usually it's me. Did no. you see? I know. I know. No, uh, I wasn't. You. I wasn't going that direction. I, <laughs> I mean, but if you look at it from a political arena, that's exactly what you're talking about. So uh, you're talking about a, a, a communications director, a spokesperson, a multimillionaire, someone representing the Elon Musk, the Bill Gates, those types of people. I'm sorry, Kev. No, the only one that's going to have um, the kind of power at the pool. The attraction would be a celebrity, even Musk. I don't think, you know, Musk's pretty divisive. You either love him or hate him, but these celebritards, that's why I call them celebritards. <laughs> I um, love that. That's yeah, good, yeah. Really yeah. Def, but I love that. They've got a way of um, holding people in a spell, literally, in a trance, <laughs> you know? Um, I think they've well, got let's the... just say this, Kev, that we're seeing some people on the earth now in the high places that have people in a trance and in under a brainwash. And uh, so uh, we're seeing it in certain circles, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we, if we don't get to the prayer list soon, we're never going to get out of here today, guys. <laughs> yes. I tell you, it's going to end up and a five-hour show. We have to do show. another show, Kev, yep. on yep. this. Uh, so the three of us have to come back with another, you know, to where we can really dig into this. It's the quantum show. We talk about so much, but it leaves so much to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you Very go. Well. Honestly, this show has evolved to the point now, in just a few weeks, we could do a daily show. Yeah, and we could do different things. No, you're I mean, all that, right. I've that... got enough. I've got enough radio and like streaming and things. <laughs> so to do, do I. I know. So I know. I know. Bell. I'm just saying, but that's that's where we've gotten. I mean, it it doesn't take long when you put these three guys together for us to sure. take any topic and then literally tear it apart, dissect it, and look at every possible angle. See, that's what I love Very about true. you guys. We tack it from all fronts. And Bill, <laughs> yeah, how's it been this week with people reaching out to you, brother? Uh, a lot as usual, and no. uh, again, there are just so many people in need, and uh, and I'll, I'll say a quick prayer here, and, and Father, I thank you and praise you for helping us to have gotten through the difficulties that, that we did uh, with the interruptions in the show today, and we thank you and praise you for uh, Eddie Perez being such a good man, and I ask that you bless him in all of his ways, and Father, I pray that you uh, have worked through us to be a blessing to everyone out there that has uh, listened in or watched today. And Father, I just thank you and praise you for everything. 
uh, may you bless and protect everyone out there and bless them with everything that they are needing. Uh, glory to you, Father, forevermore in Jesus' name. And I guess we'll start the prayer list now, uh, starting with my stepson, Nick, who had a major surgery uh, on Monday. And I'm happy to report that he is uh, recovering and his surgery was successful. And he is going to make a full recovery. And uh, he's already um, ahead, in my opinion, ahead of schedule, uh, the timetable for his six to eight week recovery. So I praise God for that. And I pray that God will continue to bless him and heal him um, at the surprisingly um, fast rate that he is. Uh, we also want to pray for Gaia and uh, Kev's Aunt Ruby and Travis, your Aunt Linda. Uh, we pray that God blesses them with everything that they're needing and may he bless and heal them quickly. Uh, we pray for Amanda and Farah, uh, Bob and Jen. Uh, we pray for Walt, uh, Rebecca, um, Deborah Denise and her daughter, Brooke. We pray for them. Uh, my good friend, Trisha Dozier from A Haunting sent me a prayer request for her uh, friend, Jamie. Um, Jamie is uh, going through a terrible time right now health-wise, and, and we pray for a complete healing miracle for Jamie. Um, uh, another good friend of mine, Lauren DePinto, sent me a message uh, asking to pray for her mother, uh, Wendy Miko, and uh, she too is having some uh, uh, really bad health things going on, and we pray for a complete healing miracle for her. Um, we're praying for Sue Beckner, uh, Marisol Vasquez, uh, Michael Daly, James Kelly, uh, Stephanie G, Shana, uh, Henry Ford, Kim Sutton, uh, Jason H, Lydia and Eric, um, Brett G, uh, Ken Fields, uh, Polly Brewster, uh, Rudolph and Mary Garza, uh, the Bergstrom family, the Nuno family, uh, Nadia, Jeanette, uh, we pray for Summer, Jose Velez, Margaret O, Earl Oldham, uh, Lisa Stansel, um, Scott, and uh, Scott is having uh, seizures and blackouts, and we certainly pray that God will bless and heal every one of these people that have mentioned on the list with everything that they're needing, and may God bless them all with healing miracles. Uh, Kenny, who has stomach and bowel cancer, we pray for a complete um, healing miracle and uh, total recovery. Uh, we pray for Tom Walker, uh, DeJarlis, uh, we're praying against uh, the devil and all his minions and all principalities and dark spirits that may be against him. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, Wendy Douglas is asking uh, to pray for her son's health, and we do. We pray for him. May God bless him with everything that he's needing. Uh, Julianne Emmerich, uh, she is, uh, wants us to pray for her, for her arthritis. And... Uh, we pray that God will heal that arthritis and help her to be able to move forward and, and be able to do all the things that she wants and needs to do without pain. Uh, we pray for Helen Carr. Uh, we pray for uh, Kimberly Offman. And uh, Kimberly sent a message asking to pray for Erica and Caden and Ricky Jr. Uh, Potter from drug addictions, and we do pray for them. And we pray for uh, their, their finances as well. Uh, may they all uh, turn to God, is what I pray, that they will turn to God and accept Jesus Christ and change their ways and become gainfully employed and move forward. That's what I pray. And uh, I also want to pray for Omar and Michael. And uh, Omar is over in London. And he's someone that uh, I performed a deliverance for earlier in the week. And he's got quite a story. I think we're going to have to get him on the show one of these Sundays to uh, talk about his story. But uh, he's an individual that served in the uh, Royal Navy and uh, ended up eventually uh, turning to Satanism and having a life practicing dark arts 
And uh, then he had an epiphany after several tragedies um, and some real hardships. Uh, he decided to come back to God, and I'm happy to tell you that uh, he reached out to me, and I performed an exorcism deliverance over him, and God worked through me to free him, and he has changed his life, and he is going to move forward in his life by keeping God first, and I couldn't be happier for him, and uh, I pray that God will bless him in every aspect of his life. He was sincere. He was authentic. And this is an individual that, uh, again, was taken over by the devil and his demons and was literally uh, immersed in the dark arts. And uh, so he's a prime example that God can make the impossible possible. So I praise God for working through me to have freed him from all of that. And then he just gave his life over to God and to his son, Jesus Christ. And so I am happy for Omar. I'm excited for his future. And may he continue to move forward in peace, freedom, and victory. So uh, that's going to be it for our list this week. And uh, we'll do our final prayer and blessing and cleansing for everyone out there. So uh, I want to thank all of you for hanging with us uh, through the technical difficulties. And we truly appreciate you and appreciate you tuning in and uh, being with us every Sunday. And so now I'd like for you all to just take a deep breath in, exhale, and close your eyes and just relax yourselves. And I want you to focus on some things that may be taking place in your life currently, or maybe things that uh, from the past that keep coming in. and uh, Or if you're under spiritual attack, um, you feel cursed, whatever it may be. If you have uh, uh, problems with substance abuse or addiction, whatever it may be, just relax yourself right now and focus on it. And I'm going to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Glory, hallelujah. Now I want all of you to just keep your eyes closed and see all this garbage for what it is. And then I want you to see these giant warrior angels coming to you and literally taking all of this, taking every bit of it into custody and carrying it out and off and away from you. And may they take it and deposit it back into the pits of hell where they belong. And Father, by your mighty power and your mighty and holy name in Jesus' name, I bind and break the power of Satan and all of his demons and all of his fallen angels and all of his unclean spirits and all of his demonic powers and principalities and every demon that is assigned to these people out there, any of these people that are having these types of experiences right now. And I bind and rebuke all of those demons. And I cast them out by your mighty power and your mighty and holy name in Jesus' name. It is so. May these people become blessed, sealed, sanctified, purified, cleansed, and made holy before you, and peace is upon them, and peace shall remain forevermore. And Father, may you have your giant warrior angels take into custody any and every demon and all of their curses, hexes, vexes, and spells associated with them, and take those demons out and off and away from all that are being affected, yeah. and carry them off and deposit them back into the pits of hell where they belong. In Jesus' name it is so. Now I want everybody to take a deep breath breath in and exhale and push out really hard and feel all of it leaving you. And if you feel like that you are really, really in a titanic struggle against evil, and again, evil comes in a variety of uh, forms. And if you feel like you are under some type of demonic attack, attachment, oppression, or if you know somebody that's possessed, uh, whatever the case may be, don't hesitate to contact me. Yes, I'm very busy. I'm always busy, and I'm always going to be busy. But God always works through me to manage and help me to uh, manage to find the time to be able to help anybody and everybody. And I can't do it at the snap of a finger, but I promise you that if you're in a bad way, contact me, and we will get to you, and we will get an appointment set for you, 
and God will work through me to help you. And I thank God and praise God for it. So, uh, Kev Travis, that's all I have for this week. And boy, it's it's been a, even though it was a little struggle, we made it through and it was still a great show. And uh, I can't wait for next week. I, I'm still getting over Zoom, letting us do it for two weeks and then it starting <laughs> us the so, third day. Yes. Yeah, I tell you what, man, talk about get, you in, get used to a free thing and then wallop, down comes the hammer. <laughs> I am... Um, uh, he probably isn't li listening right now, but Eddie Perez, top notch. The fact yes. that he hung around and, and he took it, you know, in his stride, that, that's the mark yes. of a, a real... It's good man. Yeah, real good man. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Travis, can't thank you enough for getting him for the show. Yes. Brilliant show. Brilliant My call. My pleasure. Yep. My yeah, pleasure. home run, Travis. So um, that's almost us for another week. I'll be back with Ben Emlyn Jones tomorrow. I've got Nano Girl on Tuesday, and then we've got a new guest called Ken Ami on Wednesday, and that's going to be into transhumanism, um, oh. Hollywood programming for the, the oh. future we're moving into. It's going to be a real good show. Um, not Elon Musk yet, Bill. Not not yet, <laughs> but we're getting close. But I'll first, get him. I'll, I'll book him. Don't you worry. Uh, listen, when I, when I put my mind to it, when I, when I go after him, I'll get him. Don't, don't you worry. Jordy couldn't resist me, you know? So, um, <laughs> listen, folks. The most important part of this show is all of you. And if um, nobody's told you today that they that they love you, they did now. We, we Us guys here, we love each yeah. and every one of yes, you. We, do. we want right. you to come back every week. We hope you have a good week ahead. And remember, every morning... Before you even open your eyes, before you go out of bed, faith, strength, and courage. Warrior mode, folks. 2020, you need it. So until next week, good night and God bless. <laughs>